Welcome back to game number three here between Auburn and North Carolina State. Pretty exciting game number two. North Carolina coming back to win their first game of the series. What do you think of that one, Radiant? I think it really just kind of showed them playing around their strengths. Uh, they knew that the Nar had the victory condition and they just played around him so well to get the other people ahead, both in mid and bot lane, and to carry some of those mid game team fights. And you saw like at the end of the game that there was no answer for him. Like he was so far ahead that they couldn't even send a person down to go stop him from taking the inhib. Yeah, just absolutely obliterating that top lane matchup. Some good ganking as well from Pluck and Penguin on that Zac, which was taken away in this band phase. So we won't be seeing that one again from him anytime soon, I don't think. And I think he really kind of showed why Zach is just so, you know, is, is like not really shown in a lot of games because he's spanned out so often. Uh, just you were talking about the creative gank pass, and he really showed it. Thresh Kha'Zix getting banned out again uh, with the GP, so not much of a change here. But I don't think if you're NC State, you have to really change your bans, as you look pretty comfortable in what you're going into. Yeah, for sure. They did ban away the Rengar in that second set of bans. Like Park had a great performance on it in game one, so maybe you take it this time around for yourselves. Boba, how's looking for the Jin? Uh, I, I'm still not fully sure they're not trying to stick with the Zaya here. Um, they did show a pretty strong performance on it in game one. Uh, maybe they're just not confident in it going into it, but we'll have to see the Kaisa coming in here. Probably again, such high priority on that for Robert. And a really good showing on it on this last game with the yeah. Braum again. Another series actually where we saw Kaisa picked in four games and that team actually lost the first one was King's Own Dragon X today. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Prey popping off on that pick pretty much every game. So maybe Robert Cern is going to be looking to do the same here. Here's hoping they can follow the script and, you know, lose game one to win the series. Rengar getting picked up, though, before they can get banned out in the second phase. A little bit more impactful and a lot more pressure onto uh, Robert here on that Kai'Sa, as he's going to have very few answers to deal with that Rengar in this, like, mid to late game. And then Nar being picked up as well. A very strong pick coming out uh, for Kark and for Whoppers. I'll see if they try to ban out tanks. Yeah. Okay. I'm just joshing, maybe a little bit of PTSD. We'll have to see what he decides to take into the Nair this time around. I doubt it'll be Chilgath. I think, uh, you know, right now, if they can try to ban out another mid laner, or realistically, I think you ban out the Ornn, um, which a lot of people will take into the Nair, uh, purely because he has such a good engage into the Nair, uh, and good jungle assist with that Brittle. Belkaz removed from Dextimus. Interesting. I think he really only brought up the Velkaz as a Cassiopeia counter. Uh, just kind of looking at his... on it, though. He did, and he, there's the Ornband coming out there, uh, making it a little bit harder for him just Josh to get any kind of favorable matchup unless he decides to play the Yasuo, uh, which right now is actually a strong pickup with new Conqueror build uh, and is considered one of Nara's biggest counters. Be interesting to kind of see if they decide to go with that and run a no tank comp. And a lot of the engaged junglers coming out here. Penguin gonna be, you know, forced onto something, maybe similar to the Trundle in game one. But well, we Olaf's did still see... available as well. That's a pretty after, important one to remember. After the, the Olaf nerfs to his level one uh, Ragnarok going down 40%, I, if they pick it up, it's gonna be so weak in the early game, especially in this Rengar. Still, however, has some great early ganking with the Predator. So we're gonna have to see if he can snowball his lanes again. Be interesting to kind of see, um, with that Black Shield being able to kind of stop a lot of the slows coming in from the axes he's throwing, uh, and not really having a way to get rid of that in the bot lane effectively. <clears throat> Shen gonna be locked in as well. That's, I wouldn't pick that matchup personally. No, that matchup seems so rough for the Shen, um, but I it think is. that they, they kind of come from just Josh and they're like, okay, look, we need you to play tank top. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't have tank any other position. They're already locked in support and jungle. Uh, but let's try to like, you know, lose your lane hard enough, but let's impact the rest of the map. Even then, you could still pick something like the Galio in the mid lane to offer a little bit of front line or something. But instead you pick the Shen here, and that's just an absolutely horrendous time in NR. Even with the Cho'Gath, at the very least, you have a little bit of that ranged wave clear, and you can try and survive against it. Shen just gets completely bullied by Nar. 
I actually kind of want to like City Oriana there with the Shenton and being able to pop the ball into Rengar as he's ulting in. Uh, I think that would have been a really interesting play. Uh, but we do see Cinder coming out here into the Corky. Uh, pick on game one, the decks must really enjoy it. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see it come out and do rush that Hex Drinker. <clears throat> yeah, I'm surprised they didn't go with the Oriana either, as it's such a good pick with Rengar. Jumps in with the ball on him, and you can get an easy shockwave delivery system. And for those of you who don't know, it also makes the ball invisible. Um, Ooh, didn't know that. Yeah, so you can't actually see where Rengar or the ball is until uh, you get the ult proccing off. Uh, it's one of my favorite kind of two-man combos to pull off in solo queue. Yeah, certainly a strong one, but they've opted for the Syndra instead, potentially to just knock down that Kai'Sa. Huge damage from the Syndra ultimate. We'll have to see. Um, I do think Jin Morgana is a little less impactful than Kate Morgana. Um, and I really don't think that Jin's going to be able to punish this Kai'Sa as much as Kate could have. So I think we kind of see a losing lane in top for, you know, Auburn. Uh, and then the other two lanes should be going pretty even uh, with Corky being able to roam a little bit better with the package, but Shen having his ultimate and TP. Uh, and should kind of see if they'll be able to gain advantage off either of those. Uh, or if Nar is just going to be able to take over this game again. Yeah. And this bottom lane, I think, is one to keep track of. Uh, the Caitlyn wasn't picked up again for Bubba Hotep, even though it was available. And I can kind of agree with that. He seemed to be um, lackluster on that compared to his Zai game playing game one. He wasn't even getting the traps off in time to combo them with the dark bindings. So hopefully he'll have a better showing on Jin. Yeah, I mean, and I still stand by it. I would really like to see if they're going to pick up the Zaya in game four um, again, as, you know, it's it's there and they can do the Zyra Khan combo, as, you know, we've seen that no other team is really prioritizing that. And I think it's still a fairly strong pickup for this bot lane, especially as much like team fighting has been going on in this early to mid game. Uh, it just prioritizes a lot of early game strength. But we'll have to see here as well. A lot of range coming out there. I do like the Brom pickup as well to help defend these, you know, three ranged attackers. But I do feel like what you're going for here right now with this kind of kite and poke comp coming out here with this Corky and Nar, uh, with the all in coming in from Olaf. Uh, be very interesting to kind of see if Olaf is going to look to dive onto this Jin consistently in his team fights or the Syndra, um, or if he's going to kind of peel back to try to do damage to this Rengar when he goes to dive in onto this Kai'Sa or Corky. They do have a very nice potential for some setup, however, with the <coughs> Whoppers on that Nar and the Brom Glacial Fissure as well. If you can get a really good Nar into the wall, that could easily spell a team fight victory for uh, NCS. And we saw that Whoppers had a fantastic game on the Nar last time. Yeah, and we do see, you know, Cyber getting consistent two or three-man ultimates himself. So I think also being able to set up with the Braum ulti into the Nar ulti as well is is really good for their overall combo. But not very much CC realistically coming in here for the side of North Carolina. So that could be an issue for them as well. Um, as really their only CC comes from Braum passive, Braum ult, and the Nar ult. And stun from his, uh, you know, Mega Nar. So could could actually allow Rengar to do a lot of work um, especially if he does decide to get in and slip past those ultimates. Exactly. Uh, and Kai'Sa going to have a lot more issues here as well uh, if Syndra does manage to land that ultimate with again, how squishy she is. We, we have to mention it because it's been done in both Game 1 and Game 2. Robert's earned going for that Gwinzu's Rageblade first. Neither of us agree that that's really the optimal build he should be going here. So we're going to have to see if he changes that up this time around or continues to stick with that Gwinzu's Runance build that he's been going. Yeah, I think, you know, just kind of looking at the comps here, I think you go for the crit build in this in this case because you are going to have to... You're, you're more than likely going to lose the mid-game. I feel, you know, Syndra's going to mm -hmm. spike a little earlier than Corky. Rengar should, you know, once he gets that level 6 mark, is going to have a lot of pressure on this Olaf. And you're going to have to wait for those mid-game team fights once you're at that 2-3 to three item spike to really fight for this. It is going to do it for the spectator delay there. We're going to get into the loading screen here and should be on Summoner's Rift pretty soon. Again, we will go ahead and check this out and pause it at 10 seconds when we get in there so we make sure we're all on the same page. Nothing worse than casting at different times. Yeah. Spectator client, just a little bit buggy from Riot as well. Looking at the skins, the Fnatic Corky rocking it back in, though. Gotta yeah. give it to him. Did pick it in game one, so maybe not his luckiest skin. 
I want to see as well Victorious Morgana coming out though, hopefully kind of showing us a little highlight of what's going to happen for them in this game. All right, and we are going to get onto Summoner's Rift here for game number three between in North Carolina State, sorry, and Auburn. Well, one day I'll finish this load screen. I'm already just about paused at 10 seconds here, so. I am now paused at 10 seconds, so you want to give us a countdown? Uh, assuming Sims is ready. Papa Sims, are you good? Okay, looks like he is good to go, so we are going to go in three, two, one. All right. Let's see if they decide to do anything special for, you know, walking down in this game. We do see the Doran shield start coming out from Dextremus and Robert. Uh, very interesting pick up here. I'm not fully sure that, you know, Doran shield is a way to go here into this Jin Morgana. Uh, as you're going to be taking a lot of just auto harass uh, comparatively yeah. to the abilities, but, you know, still trying to keep that pretty safe. A good level one invade coming out of the Java, a really strong level one. And XP coming out there for the Braum. Flashing that mastery. Clears the ward out. And again, we see the press the attack for Robert as well. He's in that on his kite. It's a, uh, it's, I just love to see for him to run some of the more meta stuff because I feel like he could smash lane a lot harder. In this exact instance, I don't think it's too bad, um, especially if you're going to be running this. Uh, we do actually have a bug supply real quick. Uh, we will be coming back to you here in just a bit. But I think that right now, with the way Robert's playing, um, I would like to see, you know, I, I don't think press stack's that bad. You do have a lot of squishy targets, uh, because you're, you're not going to really be able to burst down the Shen too hard, uh, no matter what you build. So I kind of like the idea of being able to do a lot of damage to this Jin if you on top of them, or if this Rengar dives you, being able to do just a lot of damage with the press the attack proc with your Q, um, which I kind of noticed in the last game something he likes to do, is he will save the Q until he's got the press the attack on, um, which isn't bad, but the fact that he doesn't actually get the empowered Q uh, with the build he's going, I think, kind of is like an anti-synergy. But we'll see if he's decided to change anything up with that or if he's going to stay pretty static with it. Yeah, especially once you get the evolution for your Q, which I don't think he's gotten yet in any of the games. Um, holding off to use that Q definitely feels counterintuitive as it is on such a low cooldown. And it could be one of those things as well, where he's done a little bit of research on it and like has, has enjoyed this. But since like maybe the new Ginsu's change, it's a little different. I'm not fully sure if it's like something he's gone full on. Uh, it does look like we'll be getting back into the game here shortly. And we do see Olaf looking to start on this bot side as well. Uh, interesting to kind of see if Shen is going to have a hard time here, uh, as that does mean that more than likely he will be getting that level 3 gank uh, if he's pushed up at all. Which Nar does have the option to early push this wave and get it back to around his tower. So both jungler is going to be on this bot side first. Expect to see them make an appearance in the top lane pretty early on. So I'm kind of excited to see uh, wind conditions here. I really think that you know Pop Tart and Kark have to get a lead somewhere. Uh, if they fall behind. I think that they're just not going to have enough consistent damage to deal with Penguin rushing them down or Dex, Miss, and Robert having consistent damage over this fight. But I think if you're, you know, if you're North Carolina, I think you keep on the NAR strategy. If you can get this NAR ahead uh, and really just kind of dominate like you did last game, I think you can win the game very similar with these mid game fights. Yeah. Have to see how it plays out. Morgana Jin gonna have a little bit more poke early against Brahm and Kaisa. Oh, Fungi very really aggressive. The one thing I think they have going for them as well is Bubba Hotep on this Jin. Olaf and um, Nar aren't gonna be nearly as tanky as some other champions. So he's gonna be able to put the hurt down just like he does there on Cyber, taking two thirds of his health. I kind of just can't see what's going to happen here as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jin might actually look to build Ginsu's uh, third or fourth item. There is currently a bug with Ginsu's and uh, his AD scaling with the attack speed. And it basically like stacks recursively. So it keeps stacking off each other until it gets too small to stack, basically. 
So he can get close to 100 AD off an auto in this late game. I think it scales a lot more than that once you get a few items as well. Um, not quite as much now that they've kind of fixed it, but... Well, it, it is currently... The same numbers. They, they have come out and said it's currently not fixed on live. Oh, really? I yeah, thought it, it was. Is, no, it is still uh, still not perfect. They, they kind of fixed it, but uh, apparently it still is working not as intended. But it's, it's going to be very strong for him if he can get this late game, because I think he will be able to make up for Kai's lack of damage, and will have just so much damage, like you're saying, because they will not be as tanky uh, into Whoppers and Penguin. Binding. So. Connecting with the minion. Commissioner. Asserting his dominance. <laughs> not today, minion. Some good Poco coming out right now. It's running off a little bit here. They are losing a few CS. Uh, I'm just gonna see what's gonna happen once he picks up this wave in a turret. Uh, if there's any kind of lead anywhere. In the top lane though, Nar getting some good poke off. He's looking at start getting some kind of lead here. As every time Shun walks up on these minions, he's gonna be harassed. Yeah, surprisingly, only down a couple here. Nice top, but not quite under the tower. Kind of unfortunate there. If Whoppers had been under the tower, that would have been a very nice trade for Mundus just joshing. A 6 CS lead of 4 minutes in, uh, I do bet that's going to be a lot higher when we get closer to 10, uh, which is really good for Whoppers here, as they are kind of playing to that win con. I think it really kind of comes down to whether or not they can, you know, use that Chanel deal level 6 effectively uh, to make something happen with this bottom mid lane. It looks like Cyber has opted for the additional biscuits in his runes, just trying to stay healthy in this laning phase. Hold on, Flick can actually pop down the Predator. He's chasing him down, does land that first axe, but that does use the Predator up, so he's not going to have the move speed. Heal comes in to get Kark to safety. He did manage to trade Predator for Flash though, which is fairly good here, as we'll make sure Kark can't really do much until he hits that level 6 power spike. Did go back and pick up a Tiamat for himself. So as we saw in the first game, actually opting not to upgrade his jungle item at all. An interesting choice here. Uh, I haven't seen enough Rengars in like the most recent patches since the Q rework got reverted. Uh, but a very aggressive style he's pulling out here. And Josh and taking a lot of damage under the turret. He'll be looking to get, you know, he's getting zoned off to CS so hard. Already back to five minutes and a 10 CS lead. This is exactly what we were talking about in Champion Select. Chen just gets so zoned by the NAR. Pretty much an impossible lane matchup for him. And a lot of damage nice coming down to Braum there. Yeah. Tries to trade it back, but the Winter's Bite does not connect. I'm just joshing, just taking a beating up there. 27, sorry, 28 to 44 CS now. They do have that Shen ulti now, though. Be interesting to see what they, what they decide to do with that. As Shen ult with Rengar ult will be a very strong engage tool if they decide to go that as well. Um, oh, the man. submarine Shen, if you will. Now I really wish we got that Orianna for like an invisible shockwave into Shen ulti. That sounds so dirty. <laughs> like, Yeah, unfortunate. But uh, they went with Cinder instead. So hopefully she can impact the game nicely. Oh. Syndra does decide to go Archangels here. A little interesting choice. Uh, you do see a lot decide to go for that Ludens for the early pushing power, uh, especially as Corky will be pushing fairly hard here once he does hit that level 6 spike. Um, and being able to answer that's very good to be able to roam out, uh, especially once he does get this package delivery service online. Yeah, the Archangels as well will allow Pop-Tart to stack the Dark spheres a little bit more as well leading up to team fights just with that extra mana do you like what we're seeing right now though robert again showing that even like in a lane that he's supposed to be losing is still even on the cs and might actually be ahead uh well so he'll still be a little behind once this kind of comes through uh if they pick up this entire wave but still looking really good for their bot lane right now yeah I'm just joshing. Does secure that cannon up there. Really feels bad if you miss them now, unfortunately. 
Yeah, I think that's something he's also been playing. Whoppers is playing really well around these cannon waves and making sure that, you know, I'm just joshing is taking a lot of pressure and overall damage from these cannon minions when he goes to get them. Fucking Penguin on the attempted steal, but secured by Kark. Oh, nice taunt. Again, not under tower, unfortunately. Just barely out of the range. Whopper is just playing right on the edge of safety. <laughs> Putting that on the nice edge there is really good. And actually, we do see, you know, Robert and Twitch getting pushed in now. Um, we could potentially see a dive coming out. There's a lot of damage coming down on Robert here. Rengar is now level 6. They do have that Chernolte to help with this. Uh, let's see if they decide to go for that. I think that is kind of the play, unless they decide to play a little safer and want to farm up some more. Uh, as Rengar does not fully have any lethality yet to do the extra damage. The curtain call is available as well. So could try and use that in a dive. Rengar does seem to be pathing around to this bot side. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about vision. As there is no real vision that you know, to hear of on this side here, we do see Olaf trying to maybe secure this Skettle Crab to, to prevent this, but we do see Rengar coming out there. The ping is coming out though on that ward. They spotted out Rengar, so we know he's down there now. We do get the scuttle as well. So they at least know that Rengar's going to be coming down there. And it did look like the call out on the dive was spotted there. Uh, really good pathing on the left to take the scuttle crab right there. Missing so much CS here for joshing. It's just, it's so hard to CS a Shen underneath the tower. They nerfed his Q as well, uh, I believe, two patches ago to make it even harder for him. So he's just not really picking up the CS down. 31 now. Not even. Out. Yeah, not even 10 minutes in. It's looking really bad, and it, it's even worse than the Cho'Gath from game one. Uh, we'll have to see if he can come out here again. I think it really is going to come down to what they can make happen with that Shen ulti. Does burn the TP to get back in. Might be getting Dove, however, or potentially in the mid lane. I believe Corky has the package now and just kind of posturing around that blue side jungle. Looking to take some of this vision out of the bot lane. Syndra is just rushing at it. Decides to actually go for the pink ward instead. No, just walks over it. Uh, does not actually see that pink ward. Do know that he was coming down, however, but they don't know that Rengar's here. He is gonna pop the Glacial Fisher to try and disengage his Soul Shackles. Killer Instinct back in, but gonna get killed by Kark. That's the first blood for Auburn and the Shen Ultimate to keep Commissioner alive. They might, they're gonna be looking to trade Topper and Bot Turret for this one. Botsy, it's gonna be Meganar, so a little less uh, impactful on taking this. They might, and he's looking to back out. The TP's coming in with the Meganar though. It will actually time out by the time he gets here. And they are going to try and get I'm Just Joshing. Is caught out a little bit. Going to be engaging onto him. They are actually going to pick it up. Whoppers will secure that. Fucking Penguin is going to get Pop Tart as well for Dextimus. And Hurt and Call coming is... out. Kark is going to get Pluck and Penguin. And Bubba Hotep just about falling. Dextimus gets binded under the tower. Is gonna trade the kill, but Daya as well himself. And Kark just going wild in this bottom lane. Does get stunned up. Robert Cern is gonna trade that kill onto him and at least get the shutdown. And we are seeing such a bloody fight here. Rengar picking up three kills in the exchange. He's gonna be so strong at this back. Let's see what he buys. I believe we are also very desync. So if we could pause at like, uh, I don't know, 12 10. Okay. I like had to speed up the fight there and stuff. But... Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm at a 12:10 coming in here. Right now, I'm paused. I uh, am yeah, as well. I don't know about you. Um... All right, and then in three, two, one. All right. They are going to secure that first blood on the tower after that insane fight in the bottom lane. So a little bit of extra gold bulls for Whoppers and Robert, Robert Cern. Ooh. I think a really good call there to make that TP play. Uh, they did save the tower and then potentially trading towers. 
Uh, and they, they ended up going even on the kills overall, and they're picking up too close to a 2k gold lead. Blue buff going over to Dexmas here. Gonna have such an easy time pushing out this wave. Uh, getting closer to that training force spike as well. Yeah, and once he secures his Trinity Force, should be able to do a lot more work. Oh, the Soul Shackle gonna go on to Cyber. Is gonna get locked up by it. The Void Seeker does land. Commissioner extremely low. Is gonna use the stopwatch to try and stay alive. Does end up falling anyways to Robert Cern. I think we're desynced again. What time are you at? Uh, 1310. Okay. Top lane, just getting shoved in repeatedly by Whoppers. Okay, I guess we gotta resync up. Uh, Riot, please. Yeah, you're falling, you're falling behind. Oh, I'm not sure where. For it. Um, he's Easy gonna luck. just get that kill on it. I'm just joshing and we're pausing at 1340, I guess. Now we do want to apologize for the, uh, any kind of delay going in here. Uh, and we will go ahead and, at 1340, we are going to go ahead and resume in three, two... I guess we're pausing at 1350. Oh. oh. I, Papa Sims posted the wrong time. Blame him. <laughs> no problem. All right. I paused at 1350 now and ready when you are. All right, same. All right, we'll three, be on back in... Two, one. Yeah, apologies. Um, there are strange spectator issues. Never quite figured out why it happens, just sometimes it plays a little bit faster, sometimes you get like weird lag. I do want to point out though, that fight could have been pretty good for, uh, you know, Auburn there. But it looked like Jin just did not want to fight that. Maybe the fact that Robert Stern does have that full item against use right now. Uh, and he is pretty strong in that, you know, in the 2v2. Or they yeah. decided... It kind of showed it there as well, like look at the damage he's starting to stack up here as well. Uh, that on-hit damage, the passive damage coming through with so much attack speed. They're gonna try and look for a fight in the bottom lane. Dexamus does have the package and he uses it. He gets some good damage down, but Kark, gonna be trading it back onto him. The curtain call coming out, just about falling so close to Tormented Soil, almost picking him up. Not gonna secure it in the end. Nara though, walking down here, this could be another one of those extended bloody fights. Doesn't look like quite yet as Pop Tart returning to the mid lane. Ever since that game one, it seems like Pop Tart is always the slower one to the rotation. Kark gonna use the ultimate, trying to get them on this dragon. Is secured, however. It's just gonna try and get away. Oh, actually caught out over the wall. Is gonna get killer instinct by Robert Cern. Soul Shackles, not gonna be enough. Oh, the Ragnarok and Flash over from Olaf. Gonna be able to pick up another kill here for Whoppers. And we are just seeing Auburn fall apart here after that game two. Uh, you know, Rengar not taking the Blast Cone, not fully going under the turret here to run away, taking that kind of stutter step backwards. And that is just, you know, we're really kind of seeing a difference in play, I think, from game one in Auburn right now. Yeah, even... Even though he didn't take the blast cone, he walks back instead. No flash available for him, but he could have just tried to walk out underneath the tower at the very least, but ends up just walking back into the enemy team and dying. Well, that's what they decided to do here as well, if they're going to go for, you know, I think they kind of really can abuse this mid-game spike. Corky's so close to that trend for should have it on his next back here. I think, again, Nar at 3-0 and 2, I think we're going to see him, you know, hit that same three items of he's going to go into Frozen Mallet into Vork again, because this this Shen just can't answer him. Well, he doesn't even have full Sunfire Cape yet. Is currently sitting on 600 gold, but that's not even enough to finish it. Yeah, just it says, the boots it, and components for Sunfire. It's 1600, it's 16 minutes in, and he's down 80 CS. Yeah, might see a Flame Horizon Whopper just putting the damage onto him. Braum is here giving him a little bit of support. Kark is coming in as well. Doesn't quite have the ultimate yet available, I don't think. Doesn't even opt to use it if he does have it. And this is just such a tilter. Um, and then you play top lane like this, just it hurts to see uh, how much pressure they're putting here onto Joshing. Uh, and there's not really any help coming in from the side Auburn uh, to help him out with any of this lane advantage. 
you have to remember though, they picked the Shen into the Nar. They already knew that it was taken by Whoppers. So you gotta think, do you just not have a response to it? There are some counters to the Nar that you could be playing. The Orn was taken away, but there's still ones like Yasuo and Riven that are pretty good into him. Well, I think they were kind of forced to play those. I think they were kind of forced to pick a tank in this matchup because they'd already picked out the Morgana and the Rangar, and there was just nothing else they could really pick um, that wouldn't have left them with a no tank comp, unless they went for that Galio mid lane. But I mean, it doesn't look like you know Pop Tart plays a lot of these like tankier mid laners. No, but you'll have to question yourself going into the next champion select. Do you leave that? Oh, I think he actually stole that. Olaf getting the red buff with the axe there, I believe. Ouch. A really good call. Um, they are just slowly taking over the map, choking him out. Baron's gonna be up here in about two minutes, though. Uh, they do take it fairly fast with this Kaisa build and with this Trinforce Corky. Uh, Corky will actually have a chance to pop this in four CS. Yes. I'm kind of sure he doesn't wait to try to get this coal by. Um, yeah. It always feels so bad when you get a recall, like, right on the edge of it. He should still have time to potentially, uh, you know, get one more buy-in before this Baron spawns. Uh, as just with their overall team comp, they can pressure so hard in the side wave and force this TP and the Shen ulti out. Uh, and, you know, be able to disengage these kind of fights. And Robert still trying to complete that rune ends pop tart might be getting engaged on has to flash away they burn the shen ultimate as well so no stand united for any future fight and i'm not there's so much coming out there though it it's very an interesting call to kind of see what they decide to do for it a fight breaking out this. drop the glacial fissure but they blow no ultimate in return for it i think right now if you're auburn you need to fight soon uh, you do see, you know, Ragnarok down, Glacial Fissure down. This is your chance to, like, you know, really try to get some damage onto Robert or Deximus and try to force some kind of advantage. Yeah, you are missing the Stand United, but TP is still available for I'm Just Joshing, so he can still join the fight. They do land the stun onto Olaf. He has no Ragnarok available. Is going to be caught out. Power and Leash going to take him down. Kill will go to Bubba Hotup. Curtain call out is going to be tagging Robert Cern. Going to miss the second shot. Will connect the third. Fourth shot goes wide again, however, and Cyber going to make his way out as well. Destimus, Valkyrie's over the wall to safety. And we are seeing some just overall clean play. Nari is just forcing the Shen to stay. The Commissioner walks away from the rest of the team. Is going to have to flash, but picked up anyways. And a really good passive proc on the auto. Yeah. Nari's it's just, I can't understand why Commissioner walked the exact opposite way of the rest of the team. He saw he had the passive stacks on him. I want to see. Uh, maybe he thought he'd be safer. That maybe it was the you know had been used earlier in the fight. I'm not fully sure. But right now, five to ten, twenty minutes in, we have a seven k gold lead on the side of NC State, and it's gonna be really hard for Auburn to come back from. And a lot of that here is gonna be on this top lane here. So we have actually hit a flame horizon here. We'll see who actually stays to the end of the game. 197 CS to 92. 92 and that Shen... CS at 20 minutes as well. That's when rough. When you're being outfarmed by all the noises, take so much, and he's not able to get any of this. This actually could be the Hot kill. Wapis from the is end. just diving. Actually, isn't gonna find it. But they're on the Baron as well. It's already down to 3k. Looks like it's gonna be falling. Nothing you can do about it. Kark is gonna try and go in with the ultimate, but getting chased down by Dextimus. Valkyries towards him. How can I connect? No killer instinct available as well. He just walks back into them. And such a good package to stop the Rengar ult jump from coming through. That was absolutely insane. He had Dextamus playing that really well, but Kark just... I can't understand what he was looking to do there. I think right now it's, it's just a little bit of tilt going on. Um, I think after that game one, you, you come in feeling very confident. And game two is a little bit of a tilter and then right now with how nc stage picking over this game it's just absolutely insane how much control they have um and you got to go back to the ban phase again i think you're leaving the kaisa open again for robert sir and he's played it in all three games the nar last game for whoppers and he's like they gonna make some changes yeah, like even if you don't think that Kaisa is like the main concern for your loss, I feel like at this point, just getting him off of a comfort pick going into game four, uh, if they just, if they do win this, 
Um, or even if they don't, like going to game four, I think you really need to try to take him off what he's comfortable on. Because he's shown that even in losing matchups, he's going even in CS, and that's such oh, a yeah. problem for them. That played into Caitlyn as Kaisa, like pretty much the lowest range ADC, like lane ADC, into the highest range, and still came out fine. On top of the tower on Whoppers, just gonna walk away. He actually Dexter comes ran. out ahead in that trade. Dexter I... missed actually in the bot lane. Kark gonna go back in, almost getting the kill, but Dexter is just too much damage. Ooh, so close on the trade kill back there. Uh, oh, the Olaf, Ragnarok, and going in on Pop-Tart. Gonna use the Snare of some Brace, gonna get stunned up either way. Glacial Fisher gonna knock him up, and Olaf will secure it. Gets locked up under the tower, however, and Commissioner will secure that one. Oh, slowed down by the Winter's Bite, and Bubba Hotep gonna get exhausted as well. However, under the turret, stuck there for multiple seconds. Gonna have to heal away. Curtain Call out. Cyber gonna put up the Unbreakable, taking lots of damage. Actually gets blown up by that four shot. Soul Shackles down, and they're gonna be able to trade this kill onto Robert Stern. Actually, Killer Instinct back in, even with the Stand United still ends up falling. Whopper's just diving. The Nexus turrets are on, just joshing. Auburn is falling apart here. Gets the kill with the hyperproc. Oh my god, such a crazy play. Uh, Robert. Just... <laughs> oh, at the very least, they kill Kaisa. Getting the shot down there doesn't look too bad if they don't lose this tower, but I'm not fully sure. She barely gets it. And it looks like we're going to see Phantom Dancer out of the Snar here, this third item here. Runin's instead, Runin's actually. Actually, yeah. Going super carry Nar. You uh, can get the hyper proc on multiple people, but the issue with it is that you stack your Narbar almost instantly. Yeah, and we'll have to see what besides going to maybe it's just like a wave clear tactic as well to be able to push these in. Um knowing he can just fight this, like even tower diving at this point, knowing just oh, how Valkyrie little and holy is. crap, Dextimus, tons of damage on the pop tart and just gets exploded. <clears throat> Pops are having a lot of problems showing any kind of dominance after this game one. Uh, kind of to talk about this here. You know, we're talking about mentality in game two. I think right now Auburn's really got to be thinking, what can we change? You know, how do we how do we fix this? How do we stop ourselves from spiraling? Because right now, oh, uh, commissioner, <laughs> a lot I think of game reconnected bugs instantly. On. So uh, I believe we're fine. We might be far enough behind as well. Um. All right, though, some good vision denial coming out here, uh, trying to keep themselves. The base is not broken yet. Oh my god. But and 24 that minutes lead, in. That lead in the top lane, 5 1 and 2 on NAR, 230 CS to 118. He has three completed items and half of another to Sunfire Cape, two cloth armor. So, with this giant spell, what do you think NAR is going to be building into at this point? Um, Probably Randwin's Omen, would be my guess. Yeah, I'm thinking randoms. I could, and this is just with the weird build right now. I could Warmogs. see him going into Warmogs because he does have the health for it from the Black Cleaver and the Frozen Nod, I believe. He has no resists, however. Yeah, I mean he hasn't had a team fight pretty much all game, so I think that well, does we'll have a lot of max health damage though. So if it, like, God forbid, it somehow managed to make to that state, but very late game, a lot of health, I think he ends up losing. Predator pop, they're looking for Kark, is gonna use the ultimate to try and get on top of him. Stan United there, this might just be handing over two kills with that Stan United, actually does get it cancelled. Looks like at the very end of the Narbar, does actually go in to cancel this. Kark is gonna drop anyways, I think that was wrong decision from Whoppers, they could have had two kills, but Curtain Call now coming out, trying to stun Nar, flashes away, gets himself to safety. And in a 4v1 scenario, he still gets out. Like, you have to give it to Whoppers to be able to, like, not do the one-for-one one kill, even when you dive up to their, you know, their overall turret, the inhibitor, and you're still just doing fine. Minute to the next dragon, and minute 30 to the next baron. But it looks like they're going to be sieging anyways. Is caught out here for Cyber. Still just going to be tanking it up. So tanky as a support currently. Eats the power unleashed as well, so that's going to be down. Nar is going in onto him, just joshing. Nar is him into the wall, just trading damage onto him. This tower is already almost down, and Whoppers just isn't taking damage. He might just be able to kill him here, chasing him down with the Runans. Look at him go. The damage onto the Shen is just too much, and Kark is going to try and get him. Not going to be successful. There's the stun. That's my... Ooh. Kill coming off that move speed. 
Yeah, just gets himself out of there. And just losing turrets everywhere, scrambling to put up some kind of defense. Yeah, and definitely hard to when they're so far in the lead. It is a 15k gold lead as Robert Stern does go in. Uses the killer instinct, but he's gonna get soul shackled up. Flashes away from it just in time. Cyber in the front line trying to give defense and Ragnarok now popped by Olaf as Dextimus picks up the Rengar. Curtain call does come out, trying to find some kills, but the Unbreakable there to block it. Move the Valkyrie forward. Power Unleashed comes back up and Dexamus almost drops to it. Cyber does end up falling. Whopper's super low health. Just about gets picked off. But the bottom block from Olaf gonna save him. And Tunip's down. Did you guys see they back here? Just look to get for this Mountain Drake first. Uh, as you know, they Do you don't need the Mountain Drake. You no, but at this point, as at this point, I think it's it's basically a free item before you recall, and it's gonna take them like probably five seconds to kill this thing, with how strong Kaisa is. Yes, they are at least gonna get that before they recall. I do want to point out. I apologize. It was seven seconds. Uh, my math was a little off. Seven seconds. And they're gonna what? To take that Mountain Drake. Oh. Uh... Now they are going to be able to take this Baron incredibly quickly, especially if Whoppers they're helping. Uh, as Whoppers damage, along with Robert Kern's damage, is just going to do so much to this Baron. Uh, and with this double Mountain Drake comp as well, they just do everything so much quicker. And they could even have Whoppers look to be pushing out uh, as well. And you are not kidding. I hope That's they go for this Baron because I want to see how fast they actually kill it. I don't think it'll last more than uh, the seven seconds that Dragon did. Car pops the ultimate on the hunt. He's not really on the hunt for much, though. I'm not fully sure on that one as well, because that was like their main tool to potentially steal anything. Oh, the Stand United is coming in. Is going to absolutely decimate Dextimus. Going to look for the kill. The taunt is going to get him. Curtain Call will secure it. Trying to go in, but... Just joshing drops almost instantly. Kark getting run down by Whopper's flashover from Cyber and not even really needed as he's just taken down. It does look like Nara decided to go for the Warmog's build as well. Very surprising. Yeah, and look at this Baron falling already down to 2k, 1k. It is gone. They killed that as fast as they killed Dragon. Oh, the Void Seeker Killer Instinct going in is going to get stunned up, but secures the kill onto Jin already and. They might be looking for more. Does use the supercharge. Is not going to get binded up. And Commissioner might be falling here. Does get stunned up again. Power Unleashed is going to secure from Pop-Tart. Trying to get away from Pluck and Penguin. Doesn't and while all this is happening, Nara is taking the base. That's going to be He is game. looking for the end of the game here. Pop-Tart just about dying here. It doesn't really matter as Whopper is just laying the damage down under the Nexus. Undertone not securing that kill, but Whopper is securing the game. Game number three going over to... North Carolina State. Such a strong game three here. I think North Carolina showing that they really have a lot to prove after that game one and going up to match point in the series in the game four with two very commanding mid game team fighting, like, you know, comps and taking advantage in the top lane. Uh, I kind of just see we will go into more uh, when we get into pick band for this game four coming in here right now. Yeah, and Auburn got to look at their pick band. There's going to be some changes, I think, in this game coming up, because if you don't change anything, I think we just see a replay of what just happened. Yeah, because there's basically almost a replay that happened in game two. They didn't really adapt. They they haven't taken off the people that are the strong picks uh, in, in favor of what they think they might have a problem with. And, you know, adapting a series is one of the hardest things for a collegiate team to do, uh, just in general, or any team, really. Adapt Adaptation is the what make or breaks these kind of things. And I think we did see adaptation... You know, from North Carolina after this game one, and it seems like they've put Auburn on the back foot ever since. Yeah, we will have to see what they do in game number four here. We'll be back shortly with that one.